Bradley and the Great Swamp Mystery. One hot summer day, Bradley, the brave bear, was meeting his alphabet friends for a picnic at Old Great Swamp. Ziggy, the Ziggy zebra, arrived early. Hey there, Ziggy, called Bradley. It's good thing you take vitamins. That basket looks mighty heavy. It sure is, said Ziggy. It's full of breads, bananas and big bottle of blueberry soda. And I even brought my banjo. Soon, Perry, the polite porcupine, arrived exactly on time as usual. Good morning, Bradley. Good morning, Ziggy, he called, tipping his hat. Thank you so much for inviting me. But I must tell you that a rainstorm is predicted for this afternoon. Bradley looked up at the sky. I don't think it will rain, he said. But even if it does, we will manage. Then Fenton, the fearful frog, and Ivy, the impatient iguana, arrived. I am afraid we are a little late, Fenton said. I had to pack my band, my insect spray, my swimming kit, my flashlight, my toothbrush, just in case. It's going to rain, you know. Are you sure you should go on this picnic? Will we get wet? Will we catch cold? Will we get hurt? Ivy hopped up and down. Enough talk, she shouted. Let's go, let's go. I can't wait another minute. What are we waiting for? I suppose we are all waiting for me. Call Lizzie, the lazy lamp. As she walked slowly up the path, Sorry, I am late. I will but I was tired and sat down to rest. Well, I guess we are ready to go now, said Bradley. Follow me. When they came to the water, everybody helped spread the blankets and set out the food. It was very quiet except for the buzzing of bees and the chirping of crickets. I wonder why no one else is pin picnicking here, said Fenton. They were probably afraid of the monster, said Ziggy. What? Monster? Fenton asked, looking around for him. I beg your pardon, but there's no such thing as monsters, said Perry. There is too, said Fenton. I don't believe this, Perry said politely. Ease too, insisted Ziggy. Calm down, said Bradley. Even if there is a monster, we don't have to worry. We will all be safely at home by the time it gets dark. Monster, monster, said Ivy. Pass the sandwiches and the soda, please. I am hungry. I want to eat. So the alphabets sat down on their blankets. Perry folded a napkin carefully and spread it on his knees. He placed a sandwich on a plate, cut it neatly in half and took small bites. Fenton helped himself to a bun. Then he emptied his just-in-case bag and checked to make sure nothing had been lost. Ziggy tuned his banjo while he sipped his soda. Lizzie fell asleep while eating a bunch of grapes. Bradley finished his sandwich and lay on his back, looking up at the sky. He pretended that the grey clouds were puffy little dinosaurs. Ivy gobbled her sandwich up and gulped her soda down. Let's go, she's called. What's taking so long? I'm ready to go hiking. But nobody else wanted to rush. So Ivy grabbed her butterfly net and tightened her hiking boots and went off into the woods alone. Bradley watched as Ivy disappeared behind some bamboo bushes. Then he looked back up at the sky. The clouds seemed to be getting darker. Splat! Bradley felt a drop of rain on his forehead. Then 
The raindrop bounced on Ziggy's banzo. Trip, trip, trip. Rains sprinkled down on Fenton's bag. Boom! The sound of thunder rumbled in distance. Lightning zigzagged across the dark sky. Fenton started to tremble. Oh, oh, oh my! It's really dark now. I think I hear the monster coming, he cried. That's only thunder, said Bradley. We would better make a tent out of these blankets. Bradley woke Lizzie and they all crawled into the blanket tent together. What about Ivy? Barry wanted to know. Why isn't she back yet? The monster will get her for sure, said Ziggy. Yes, whispered Fenton. The monster will get us all if we don't leave here right away. Bradley was worried about Ivy too, but he forced himself to smile. I have an idea, he said, trying to look cheerful. Ziggy, play us a happy tune on your banjo. Perry, you sing along. I will go out and look for Ivy. But what about the rain, the thunder, the lightning and the monster, said Fenton. Aren't you scared? I guess I am a little, admitted Bradley. But I can't let that stop me. Ivy may be in trouble. I have to help her. Bradley buckled his boots and went out into the rain. He ran down to the lake. The ground felt squeezy and slimy. He looked behind every bush and set up and down the path. But Ivy was nowhere to be seen. Ivy! Ivy! he shouted. There was a dark shadow on the swampy water and over the rock pile. Bradley saw a strange sheep. Was it the great swamp monster? Bradley's heart was beating high. Suddenly, Bradley heard a friend cry. Help! Help! Somebody please help! The sound came from the rock pile. It sounded like Ivy. Hold on, Ivy! Bradley said, I'm coming! Bradley made his way through the puddles around the rocks and there was Ivy, cold and wet and trembling. Oh, Bradley, how am I glad to see you, she cried. I tripled over the rock and hurt my ankle. I'm afraid I can't walk. Lean on me. I'll help you back, said Bradley. When the alphabets saw Bradley and Ivy coming down the path, they cheered and clapped and shouted, Hooray! Suddenly, everyone noticed the rain had stopped. Everything was quiet again. The sun came out from behind the clouds and shone to the last clustering raindrop. And in the sky above the rock pile, the most beautiful rainbow appeared. That's a Bradley rainbow, cried Ivy. Bradley is our hero. Yes, everybody agreed. Bradley is our hero. Bradley, the bravest bear there ever was. The end. If you love my stories, please do subscribe to my channel and I'll be back soon with a new story. Till then, bye-bye.